What's up everyone, you're watching the Base is Good channel and today I'm heading to the hardware store to pick up some supplies cause we're building a subwoofer enclosure for this Rockford Fosgate P3. For this build I'm going to be using 3 quarters inch thick MDF. Now you could use half inch but I would only consider using it for smaller subs and I know I'm only using one 10 inch but this P3 has a massive magnet. Alright so I'll grab a 4x8 foot size sheet and to make things easier to manage on my table saw I will just go ahead and have it cut in half in the store. Next, I'll just roll my two 4x4 sheets over to the hardware section and grab a pack of number 6x2 inch drywall screws. I will also grab a caulking gun, waterproof sealant, and all surface liquid nails. Since I was here, I also picked up a can of 3M Super 77 adhesive that I will use when I carpet the box in another video. Well, that's all I need it here, so I head it back to my Forerunner where the MDF sheets just barely fit in the back. I drove home and unloaded it all into the basement. To cut the MDF, I will be using this Craftsman table saw. For your safety, make sure to read and follow the user's manual before operating your particular saw. I also made another video with some general safety tips on operating table saws. If you're interested, you can check that out right here. I'll go ahead and grab the cut list from my enclosure design. And of course, I will leave the box dimensions for this project in the description below. I also made a detailed video on how to design and tune your own ported enclosure right here just in case you wanted to know how I came up with the precise sizes I needed to cut. Starting out I'm gonna cut the top out which is 14 by 20 inches. The first cut is definitely gonna be the most challenging due to the sizable MDF sheet but much better than trying to cut a giant 4x8. Not a bad idea to recheck the size with a tape measure to be sure the cutouts are accurate. Using a pencil, I like to label each cutout. This will just make things easier when you're putting it together. And the bottom will be the exact same size as the top. Next, we're gonna need the two sides, which are both 14 by 11.5 inches. Now for the back which is 18.5 by 11.5. The front is 16.5 by 11.5. Then there is the big port which is 11.5 by 14.5. And last but not least we have the small port measuring in at 9.75 by 11.5. And now we're done with the table saw. Also, it turns out I only needed one 4x4 MDF sheet to build this enclosure. Before putting it together, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the hole for the sub. Now, handheld reciprocating saws are great tools, but cutting a near perfect circle with one is near impossible. In order to get a near perfect circle cutout, I will be using a router with a quarter inch by one inch straight bit and this circle guide. In order to find the center point I will use a long ruler and pencil to draw two lines corner to corner like this. Next you're going to want to find the cutout diameter of your specific subwoofer. This can be found in the user's manual or sometimes on the outside of the box. And this one happens to be 9.13 inches. So taking a look at the circle guide I will find the 9 and unfortunately there are only fractions on this scale. But 1 8 equals 0.12 and 3 sixteenths equals 0.1875. The 1 eighth is slightly smaller so I'm going to go ahead and use the 3 sixteenths to make sure it's going to fit. I'll start by drilling a hole at the center point with a 1 8 inch bit. Then I'm going to remove the bit from the drill and insert it through the 9 and 3 sixteenth inch hole on the guide. Then through the hole I just drilled which will allow the guide to pivot at that point. Then I'll start drilling at the cutting point of the guide with a quarter inch drill bit. I'll move the guide out of the way then continue to drill all the way through. This is just to prevent 
prevent damaging the plastic guide as much as possible. I will then attach the guide to the router with three screws and then insert the quarter inch router bit and tighten it down. Then I'll insert the 1 8 inch drill bit into the proper hole. Then insert it into the pre-drilled holes. Make sure your router is unlocked. Be careful near the end because the circle will fall. You may need a tiny bit of sandpaper if there are any imperfections. And check it out, the subwoofer fits almost perfectly. There is a tiny bit of free play but it should fit snugly after I carpet the box. Alright, now it's time for my favorite part which is putting it all together. Along with the stuff I picked up at the store, I will also be using the drill with the bits an impact driver with a number 2 Phillips, a rafter square, and some bar clamps. I'll grab a drill bit that has the same diameter as the center part of this type of screw I'll be using, but not including the threads. To get started, I'll grab the back and one of the sides, lining them up like this, so the side overlaps the back as shown in my drawing. I'll use a bar clamp to hold them together tightly. After making sure the edges are lined up evenly, I'll drill two holes, here and here. This drill bit is really dull by the way, so it kinda takes me a while. Then I'll take it back apart and apply a bead of liquid nails where the boards will make contact, and screw them together. I'll just use a paper towel to wipe off the excess glue. Then I'll flip it over and do the exact same thing with the other side. Next I'll grab the bottom and place it here, then clamp each side down while making sure the edges line up well. I'll drill two holes on each side. Then I took the bottom panel off and applied the glue and placed it back in the same position then screwed it down on both sides. I drilled three more evenly spaced holes on the longer part, then screwed it down. Next I'll install the front panel, and again I'll use the bar clamp to hold it in place the best I can, and I'll drill two holes on the side. And then I will apply the liquid nails on the side and bottom, and screw it in. Next, I'll flip the box over and line up the front panel with the bottom, then I'll drill two more holes and screw it down. With the front, you want to be careful where you drill so you don't end up poking through the opening. I'll go ahead and make sure to wipe off any excess glue with a paper towel, and then I'll apply the sealant to all the edges. Next, I'll assemble the port walls together with the longer one overlapping the shorter one, as shown in my design. I will only use two screws for this. I'll go ahead and place the port wall into the box and line it up with the front and drill two holes. I'll apply the glue and screw it together. Unfortunately, the lower screw started stripping out, so I had to give it two additional screws to make sure it is held tightly. And of course, I forgot to apply the glue to the bottom of the port wall, so I removed it, hopefully for the last time, glued it, and then reassembled it. I used the rafter square to make sure the port was straight. I turned the box over and again used the rafter square to figure out exactly where the port wall is located on the bottom. I did this by using where the port wall meets the front as a guide. I drilled and screwed down the first one, but when drilling the second hole, I broke the drill bit off inside the box. No problem, I'll just grab another drill bit of the same size and drill a new hole. Then I accidentally missed the port slightly on the second try. Third time Time was a charm. Next I'll set the rafter square next to the box like this. Hold the pencil at 2.75 inches and slide it back and forth. The port wall will be right above this line. Then I'll drill and insert two more screws. If you made any mistakes like I did and have open holes, make sure to fill them with sealant to prevent any air leaks. Then I'll flip the box over and apply sealant to the new edges. Then I'll flip the box right side up and apply a bead of glue all along the middle, then apply a bead of sealant all along the inner edge because this won't be accessible 
noticeable when the box is closed up. I'll place the top on while making sure it is lined up and drill and screw it together just like the bottom. Honestly, you probably don't need to use the screws for the port walls on the top and bottom since it is sandwiched in between, but personally, I like to do it anyways just in case. Alright, now I will just smooth it out and wipe off any extra sealant or glue. On the non-port side, I'll find the center point again by drawing an X. You can really put the terminal cup anywhere you want besides the port, but just make sure it will not interfere with the subwoofer. In this hole saw kit, I'll find the one that best matches the terminal cup and start drilling. This one has been used a lot, so it's pretty dull. It just kind of burns its way through. After that's done, I just like to vacuum all the sawdust out. And we're all done. In the next video, I will be showing you how I carpet this subwoofer enclosure. And I also have an entire subwoofer playlist on everything from designing a custom enclosure to installing the sub and amp in a car. So be sure to check that out if you're interested and I will catch you guys later. Peace.